All right, today's video is gonna be about how to switch audio signals. Let's say you got a couple different sources, maybe an FM radio and a tape deck, and you wanna feed them into some kind of device for which you can select with buttons which one's gonna be played. But it's stereo output. You have a stereo, you have a left and right of each. So you wanna be able to select both channels to be to go to the output and that output is also stereo obviously and one way you can think of this is with a a multiplexer or mux and in the digital world this is used everywhere for to, to bus digital signals but this paradigm can be applied to analog electronics as well the most basic switch uh, to switch audio or what you know one of the most the basic practical switches, I suppose, would be a JFET, simply turned on its side. And if you think about it, a JFET is basically like a variable resistor controlled by its gate. So if you just enable the gate by providing the appropriate voltage, this will act as, as a, uh, a conductor and you'll get, you could pass your signal or not pass your signal depending on what your control voltage is. Now, the problem with that is this on resistance varies with the signal and the resistance changes and that causes distortion and that R on resistance is kind of high it's like hundreds of ohms like low hundreds mid hundreds maybe um, a, a better way a slightly better way is to use CMOS or complementary MOSFETs uh, complementary meaning if a P channel and an in channel together uh, being driven by the same control voltage and by the same source so it's like they still have the same resistance curves but the opposite so in parallel together you get this much less extreme change in resistance as your signal varies so you got less distortion of your signal because there's less on resistance and less change one way I implemented this was with a 4066 CMOS chip. This is exactly what, what this is. It's basically a complementary CMOS switch, but there's four of them in the chip. I'm only showing two here, but there's four of them in the chip. So you can switch uh, two stereo devices with this. Um, in this example, I'll only be switching two. I have a left and a right channel coming out of a tape deck and it's feeding this thing now I have to have this 47k resistor divider here on both and I figured this out after much experimentation and carefully reading the data sheet that the max input voltage is from negative 0.5 volts to the drain voltage plus 0.5 volts which means if you put in a line voltage signal which could be up to 2 volts peak to peak um, Anything below negative 0.5, anything in that negative half the, the sine wave is going to actually get through. It'll pass through. So what I did is I went ahead and put a voltage divider to put that input at half the voltage so it sits between the two extremes. And so you don't get uh, this weird distortion crosstalk sound, which is pretty terrible. Uh, but that does mean you have to have capacitors for that to interface with your equipment because then now you have DC sitting on on your input output and so what we can do then is take these two control voltages and tie them together and we can just modulate that one and we can switch both of these on and off and we'll do that with a transistor latch if you haven't seen one of these before it's basically two transistors hooked up such that there's positive feedback um, basically, if you press one of these two buttons, it grounds out one of the bases of these transistors, these BJTs, um, and that circuit will change and then latch in that position. Or if it hasn't changed, it'll just stay in that position. Um, you can connect these two collector volt or one of these two collector voltages to uh, these two here. So if you press switch one, it'll like enable it. If you press switch two, it'll de-enable or disable what the heck it'll disable uh, both those controls at once 
thus turning on and off your your equipment. Now, if you press switch one, that will enable the control one, like I just said, but also it'll do that by turning off Q1. Because if this, if this goes away, if this turns off, that's gonna look a lot like the rail voltage, 12 volts. And, but it's gonna turn on Q2 and it's gonna pull control two low. And it'll stay like that because of the positive feedback. Now, here's an example of such a circuit. Right here, <clears throat> we have the transistor latch. Transistor latch right here. Our left and right switch, this turns it on, this turns it off, and we have our 4066 chip with our input and output capacitors. Uh, it's also on the 12 volt rail, right over there, 12 volt rail. So I've got this thing also hooked up to my tape deck right here. That tape deck is running out into this thing and back into this amplifier. And you can hear in a moment. Got my tape here. And I'm gonna play that. Uh, yeah, the amp's powered up, okay. So if I hit play. Coming through in the meters. Now, if I press this button, gone, nothing. Not tea bag, eh?